Hello everyone and welcome to my session. Today I will talk about AWS Control Tower and Landing Zone. Let me introduce myself for all of you who don't know who I am. I'm Zamira, Solution Architect at Mobiquity, where my main responsibility is to help customers with their digital transformation through the process of designing and building digital products and services that serve a purpose. I have more than seven years of experience implementing critical and complex AWS solution with virtual machines, containers, serverless, data analytics for small and enterprise companies. I was recognized as APN ambassador and AWS hero by AWS recently. I'm also organizer for AWS user group in Netherlands and Albania, coordinating several meetups with international speakers. In this session, I want to show you some of my experience, the challenge, actual problem the companies are facing to govern their secure data and systems, to have a good structure for their cloud environments that includes basic IT capability, such as logging, monitoring, etc. In the second part, I will cover landing zone provided by Control Tower, the features and all the services that are part of this solution. And the last one, but not less important, I will talk about what is the next step. Could I extend landing zone based on my needs and my requirements? I would like to start with this example. Let's imagine a company organizational structure is made up of teams such as finance, marketing, security, engineers, etc., etc. Each team has a certain activity in order to archive the goals, functionality, and the process that we, with them, make cross business. As the company gets bigger, the activities increase, the size and functionality of the teams increase. But also new departments come up with a new purpose and the top of the company is general manager that governs, who governs everything. Why is it so important for a company? In my experience so far with enterprise companies, one of the biggest challenges is how to find a simple strategic solution to govern the systems and the data in secure, scalable and efficient way. The company are truly looking for a full spectrum of the process and to keep their system under control. Who can access what and when? If there is security or vulnerability in place, regularity auditor, etc. Some of the common challenges that companies face are to find a good structure for their cloud environments, change management solution to handle any change securely, Centralized account management, centralized login and risk management, centralized policy and compliance, security baseline, centralized cost, defense solution to prevent any issue, right access control to their data and system. The same logic follows the landing zone, a set of AWS accounts, services, process between them. Each account or services has certain activity and functionality and all is governed by control tower. So control tower is not actually a person, but a service managed by AWS that offer high, highly effective governance solution, providing an automated way of implementing such as cloud landing zone following some of the best practices provided by AWS. If you are an enterprise with a large number of applications as distributed teams, cloud setup governance can be complex and time consuming, slowing down your innovation. You are trying to speed up. That's where AWS Control Towers come in. AWS Control Tower provides the easy way to set up and govern a secure compliance multiple AWS environments based on best practice. I talk about the challenge the company face now. Let's see the solution provided by Control Tower. What does Control Tower offer? Features and capability of Control Tower. How many services do I have to launch? What about my security? What about my networking? What kind of application? What about my governance baselines? And which way I have to deploy? 
There are four important things to remember for landing zone. Speed and easy way. Control Tower lets you to automate setup with just a few clicks using an established blueprint by configuring AWS environments such as multiple AWS structure, identity and access management, and account provisioning workflows. Scalability. The solution, the solution is fully scalable. You can request as many accounts you need, as many services you need, so you can extend the solution based on your needs and your requirements. Security. You can apply security and compliance policy using established guardrails, which prevent resources being deployed that don't comfort the policy. You can detect and main non-compliance service. High availability. Probably most of you know already AWS is a global location composed of regions, availability zones, and local zones. And each region has a separate geographic area. Each region has multiple isolated located nodes as availability zones. Control Tower is hosted in multiple locations worldwide. Right now, in USA, there are three regions support Control Tower. North Virginia, Ohio, Oregon, in EMEA, Ireland, and in Asia, Sydney. You can set up in your region that you are close to. Let's get started with the features and capability that Control Tower offer. Landing Zone is a well-architected, multiple AWS account environment based on security and compliance best practice. The enterprise wide container that holds of all organization unit accounts, users, and resources. Guardrails is a high level rules that provide ongoing governance for your AWS environment. There are two kinds of guardrails, basically, preventive and detective. Account factory, Account Factory is a configurable account template that helps you to standardize the provisioning of new AWS accounts. Control Tower offers a built-in AWS Account Factory that helps you to automate the according provisioning workflow in your organization with automation template. In this picture, there are three AWS accounts, master account, log account, audit account, but also you see there are other accounts that you can add in the landing zone environment. This, how many accounts based on your requirements. Let's start with the first one, master account. This account allows you and is created specifically for landing zone when you host AWS landing zone. This account is used for billing, for everything that is part of this solution. It's also used for AWS Account Factory provision of accounts, for management of uh, organization units, guardrails. For itself, a control tower is set up in this account. The second one, log account. This account work as a repository for API activity and resources configuration from all accounts and regions that are part of Landing Zone. Audit account is very restricted account that is designed to give you security and compliance teams read and write access to all accounts in your Landing Zone. In each account, there are some resources created. Starting from master account on the top of the table, there are services that are applied in all accounts, as you see in this picture, like IAM role, IDP, CloudFormation, CloudWatch logs, CloudTrail. What these services do and how they work together, why they are important to apply in all of this account. AWS CloudFormation, there are templates refer to initial baseline or blueprint where Control Tower create all the resources in account all automatically, and these templates are versioning. Identity provider 
is created in each account, keeping AWS accounts secure and allow permission cross accounts to use resources. CloudWatch logs. This is managed service by AWS that allow you to collect all the metrics of infrastructure, VPC logs, and application logs locally in each AWS account. Let's start with the IAM role. Cross account access is used to configure outed and emergency security administrative access to AWS landing zone account from the security account. Service linked role. This type of role is associated to the resources to grant permission to specific API. Cross account role, this type of role delegate access cross AWS accounts in this scenario. Audit and log accounts allow master account to use their resources for each other. And the last one, federation roles, this type of role delegate access other AWS accounts with SAML to access the resources. This role are created in all accounts and they're well connected together to connect all the services and accounts. Now let's move to another resources part of Control Tower. CloudTrail. CloudTrail collects the history of API through AWS Management Console, SDK, command line tools, and other AWS services. is enabled across all AWS accounts and all regions. All the logs are collected in S3 bucket located in log account. In this account also is a it's created a second bucket to collect the access logs from the first bucket, and they both are in the same regions. Service catalog. Allow you to provision portfolios and add the product based on requirements and a specified budget. Control Towers create its own portfolio with already associated product called AWS Control Tower Account Factory. By default, there is no budget specified, however, you can specify the budget and not only, but you can specify what kind of resources you are going to build on top of that. And who can access to build that? If you want to launch a new product part of Control Tower, you can do it through the AWS Account Factory. AWS Organization, another service of um, Landing Zone, is used to create an account organization structure into groups and apply service control policy in each of them to ensure your accounts stay within your organization access control guidelines. Under root, there are two main groups, core and custom. Log archive and audit are part of core, but you can also add more accounts under core and under custom. Let's see some details of single sign-on, another feature. Single sign-on allow you centralized access management and permission to AWS account. You can authenticate an AWS account with a single user and password through the customer-friendly link provided by single sign-on. Also, you can set up user permissions, account permissions, group permissions, session duration, centralized access management, avoid creating IAM users, and permission in child account. So no uh, user in child account. You can enable user access to specific AWS account and applications by adding the user to the group. The test provision being allowed access to the appropriate account and application. With group, you can grant or deny permission to groups of users rather than having to apply to specific user individual. You can decide also which user and group have a single sign-on access to AWS accounts in your organization. You can manage permission sets of control to control the users level of access to this account and resources. And the last one, but not less important, all the services are applied to a secure some compliance applying the guardrails. Now let's see on how these services work together. This solution provided by Control Tower. In the following workflow is shown 
When ST Bucket in log account and audit account becomes non compliant service based on guardrails rules. Let's get started. First one user, create a public bucket or change the configuration of existing bucket from private to public, but he's not allowed to do that. So, AWS Config check that your bucket do not allow public access. If this bucket became public, this service became non-compliant for AWS Config. So change the status from compliant, non-compliant. CloudWatch event rule trigger SMS topic with all the configuration rules and sending this information to Lambda function telling one of the services became non-compliant. Lambda function elaborate this process and send notification to the SMS topic that is located only in audit account. You can also configure a subscription in this topic with your email address of the security team of other teams to send automatically notification when one of the services became non-compliant in AWS account. What about security baseline? AWS Landing Zone solution includes a national security baseline that can be used as a starting point for establishing and implementing a customized account security baseline for your organization. By default, the initial security baseline includes the following services and features. Enable MFA to all accounts. Enable cloud trail to all accounts and regions and collect all the logs in S3 bucket in the log account. AWS config rules are enabled for monitoring uh, storage encryption like EBS, Amazon S3, uh, RDS, etc., etc. Identity and access management password policy, a root account multi-factor authenticator, and security group roles. Cross-account access is used to configure audit and emergency security administrative um, access to AWS landing zone for accounts. Amazon VPC configuration, initial network for an account. This includes deleting the default VPC in all region. If you set up your in your own one AWS account, you see already the VPC default is there and a low traffic income everywhere. But landing zone, delete this VPC. And you can create your network type based on your requirement. You can set up how many subnets do you want and uh, these subnets could be public or uh, private subnets, etc. Amazon CloudWatch alarms and events are configured to send notification on a root account login. Console single in failure, API authentication failure with an account, and all other rules. Summarizing what I said, Control Tower offers a good multiple environment solution, access management, network design, login strategy solution, allow you to automate using established blueprint and having in place the quadrant to secure all of them are deploying following the best practices, following the policies, following the rules. It's a good point to start. As your company grows, you can extend the landing zone solution by adding more environment, application, security, rules based on your needs and your requirements. So let's see, well, we, we set up organization, main units, core and custom, single sign-on, guardrails, service catalog, etc., etc. Control Tower can help you to get to the cloud quickly and safely. However, Control Tower is a basic standard solution. So, it might not fit your specific needs. Let's see a possible solution. Should I extend Control Tower? Should I customize Control Tower based on my needs? Before answering this question, I want to show you some limitation. What about organization units, service catalog, ser single sign-on? Control Tower 
allows you to create these services that are managed by Control Tower, but if you have already existing organization Unix service catalog or single sign-on, you can't add it in Control Tower that are part of Control Tower. I would say this is really a limitation because probably you have already this setup in your in your um, organization and you want just to, to add it. And Control Tower doesn't allow this capability right now. One of the biggest limitations that really I saw it, it was about there is no API right now. If you want to automate, you can't. The only way to set up landing zone by Control Tower is just through AWS Management Console manually. What about guardrails and scalability? You, uh, Control Tower allow you to set up some basic rules, but there are some limitations. If you want to add more based on your requirement, you always can add it and modify it. Support version, you can scale add in more AWS accounts, rules, baselines, but all of this manually. There is no automation way to do What you can choose based on your requirement, you can choose what you want. You can choose if you want to, to speed up something very fast and easy, go for control tower. If you want to have your custom landing zone and you want to spend more time based on your requirement, based on your feed, you can go for your customer. Here is a solution we designed at Mobiquity for one of our enterprise customers. We added four more accounts. We designed a centralized login solution. Let's see first these four accounts. CICD, DAV, UAT, and Prod. You also can add more and more control tower for the flexibility to any scale. The first one, DevOps or tooling account. This account allows you, the DevOps team, to successfully release application across AWS accounts. In this case, Dev, Reprod, and Prod. Doesn't matter what your DevOps process looks like and what kind of tools you use, but it's important that these tools are isolated by other environments for security purposes. Services are hosted here include continuous integration, and continuous delivery. Dev environment. Allow developers to start de developing things, to experiment, to learn, to innovate, and to build things up. Here developers deploy their code and test any new implementation features or bugs. Once the code is considered stable, they start build and deploy them to other accounts. Pre-prod accounts or UAT, where quality assurance is performed. Tester access the staging environment and ensure that application work as it should. In this environment, they run different tests to detect bugs and ensure the application is ready to deploy into production. Production, this is most restrictive environment is where the production Applications are made availability to end users. We should have very limited access into the account. We should ensure right connectivity and all the logs are uh, collected to log in account. What about centralized logging? In an enterprise organization, some of the most critical things are controlling and managing the logs. Storing the logs in a secure way, Centralizing storage, centralizing logs saves time, increases the reliability of your log data, and allows you to filter for the most significant secure data critical for auditing, process, and compliance in large organizations. Amazon Kinesis Firehose is created to deliver a log data from the data stream to Amazon S3 for debugging or elastic search for an Arctic purpose. Firehose allow you to ingest data from different data producer, probably running a Kinesis agent on your machine, having your custom application that does this, or CloudWatch destination, like in my case, I'm using CloudWatch destination. Amazon Kinesis 
Firehose is easy way to reliability load streaming into different destination and points to accomplish different use case in parallel. You can also set up rules on how to put the data in destination, buffering data, in input by time and size. For example, push the data in Elasticsearch every five minutes and every 100 megabytes is just an example. Lambda function does transformation and validation on the data, which is residing in the Kinesis Firehose and change it before it's written into destination, decodes the data, attribute the records, and write it back to Kinesis. And this is all my session. Thank you so much.